How can we use Excel to do some probability simulations? So let's imagine we want to find the probability of rolling a 7 given two dice. Well, one of the things that Excel can do really nicely is it can uh, generate random numbers. So imagine if in this column right here, this is like our first die. And what, what I want to do is I want to randomly generate a number between 1 through 6 because those are the numbers that are on our uh, the six faces of the die. So if we go uh, equals rand between, so this is going to ask for a random number uh, between 1 and 6, and I press enter and it generates a random number. Now if I take this and I drag it down, so let's just drag it down here till we get you know a handful of random numbers, this is like if I were to roll one die uh, a bunch of times. So you know I rolled a two, and then a one, a six, a three. Um, so that's one roll of the of um, of the die. And then I want to roll another one because I'm going to roll two die at the same time. So now I'm getting a random number also between one and six, and it is just random that they both were ones there. Uh, and if I drag this down, now what I have is um, a, a bunch of random numbers. And each one of these rows reflects uh, rolling the die. Um, and so in this roll, I, I rolled an 8. Uh, in the next roll, I rolled a 10. So I want to be able to sum up each of those rolls. So the sum, I'm going to sum up and then just click and drag over, close the parentheses. And that's the sum. And, and you'll notice that these numbers keep changing. Every single time that I do an operation, the random numbers change. But that's okay because they're random, uh, and so we can expect that they will continue to act randomly. So if I get that cursor, click and drag down, now this is um, all of my uh, different roll outputs. And what I want to find is whether or not, or how many times, what's the probability of getting a 7? So the first thing I need to know is that my total number of rolls, uh, let's say total rolls, my total rolls were um, 29, because that's the column down there, minus 2, but then don't forget to add 1. Um, So that's how many total rolls I had. And then I want to know how many sevens. Well, to do this, um, this is we're going to use an if statement. So And the way that the if statement says, or the work, the way that the if statement works, is I'm going to say, you know, equals saying because I'm I'm calling a function. If actually let's let's do it over here. Um, we're going to say if my roll number equals seven. So that's that's the the logical test it says. So then we're going to put a comma, and then what's next is what happens if it's true? Well, if it's true, we're going to we're going to say let's put a 1 there to say I I, I rolled 1 7. Uh, and then the next comma after that is what happens if it's false. So I'm going to put a 0 to say okay, if if I didn't roll a 7, then I'm then I didn't get a 7. And so if we look at that first roll, I got a 3 and it returns a 0, which says, "Oh, I didn't get a 7." Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this all the way down. And what we see is we have a bunch of zeros, but every time that we rolled a 7, we got a 1. Every time we rolled a 7, we got a 1. Cool. So this, is, this enables us to do a bunch of rolls really fast. So how many 7s did I get? Well, the number of 7s that I got is just the sum of everything in this column. I got 4. And so the probability of rolling a 7 is simply the number of 7's I got, the number of successes, divided by the number of rolls.
So this suggests that I roll the probability, or, or that rolling a seven has a probability of happening of point around 21%. Now, what would make this even better, and it would be very easy to do with Excel, is if I just extended these columns down so that I rolled many more times than just 28. Maybe I could roll 100 times or, or 1,000 times. But this is a nice way of, of doing a simulation.